In this video, I want to show you how to use the campaign manager functions of address2. One of the first things people try to do is immediately go to send an email. It'll ask you who you want to send to, a query or a list. We'll pick a query. And when we do this, we realize that one of the things address2 wants us to do first is to define who we're sending to. One of the things that means is you can also begin using the campaign manager by starting just with the query or list tool. So if I said I want to send to all of my customers where the state is Indiana and the status is customers, so all my customers in the state of Indiana, then I click search, I find all the results, and in the upper right hand corner it says send email. Now it tells me this right here because I started from send email. If I started from query, I can do the exact same thing. Company, or sorry, state is Indiana. Status is customer. I can search. It'll find the same results. But this time, it gives me an option. What do you want to do with this list? Well, I want to send an email. Either way, I end up in the same action. Here, I'm writing an email to that list. So the subject is, maybe it's customer newsletter. And I want to say, hello, thanks for being a customer in Indiana. It's going to merge in contact information, first name. I can merge other fields as well, company name, last name. We can put in icons to share this email, and we can put in the sender's signature, and I'll show you where the signature gets created later. This editor down here is a, uh, uh, what you call a, a WYSIWYG editor, which means what you see is what you get. Uh, essentially, it's designed to act very much like any other uh, word processing or typing tools that you may have seen in the past. So I can change fonts and sizes and use bullets, but ultimately, I may end up in a position where I want to change the design of this to look really, really nice. Something like, oh, how about this template? And the question we get all the time is, how do I make something look like that template? How do I make it look nice with colors and design and layout? Well, I want to show you. Before you go to click Send, Start off on your campaign dashboard. Clicking Manage brings up the campaign dashboard. And I'm going to start in the lower left-hand corner, because that's one of the first things you'll need to set up before you can ever begin using Address 2. What we see down here is what's called Sender Profiles. This is where that signature line comes in. If I click on the Nick Carter Sender Profile, you'll be able to see that I've decided I want my name to appear as Nick Carter. I want the from address to be Nick at address2. And I've designed a signature that looks like this. Very simple. I could insert my image if I chose to. Using this editor, I can do other colors and nicer, more sophisticated things. But that's my simple signature. I can merge this into any outbound message. Below that, I can put in my postal mail as well. This is a required field if you want to use our postcard tool of the campaign manager. This all comes together as one sender profile, Nick Carter. Now, as you saw earlier, I can create multiple sender profiles. For example, I have a sender profile that allows me to send emails as address too. So rather than it coming from Nick Carter personally, these emails are going to appear from the company brand address too with a different email address and a more generic signature. Next, you may want to create templates. We have saved emails. We can create email templates and postcard templates. Let's start with emails, because that's one of the more common marketing tools used in Address 2. Here I can see a list of all my saved emails I've created in the past, but how did I make those? Well, I click on Create, a new template, and I'm presented with several options. Number one is I can create a template that's just a plain letter. If I just want to type a simple letter with no design, no colors, nothing fancy in it, I can do that. Then I've got these other options, which are some basic schemas, basic layouts, if you will. The default one that's selected is the newsletter one right here in the, the uh, third one on the top row. 
We also have the content store. We can go shopping. We can find templates that other people have already designed. Or we can use a template we've already designed and just start from that and open that up and make modifications, turn it into a new one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a newsletter using this layout right here. I'm going to hit save and continue and I'm presented with a more or less ugly newsletter style. Well, it's ugly because it's just in grays right now. So what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to pick maybe a light color background, kind of a orangish. Then I'm going to make the content area a, uh, a dark orange color. Maybe I want to kind of get into the browns. That sidebar is going to be really deep, deep dark brown. And I want all my fonts then, ooh, green looks ugly. Let's go with a, uh, ooh, kind of a very pale blue instead of white. Now the border around all of these boxes is still gray. Here's a little trick. You can make the border whatever you want it to be. So I can pick uh, another brown shade, and you can see the border starting to turn that brown color. Another thing that's very popular is to grab this color code here. If you copy, I just hit Control-C to copy that uh, code. Make my borders the same color as the background, make them very wide. Now it kind of gives the illusion that each of these boxes are free floating. It's simply because the borders around them are the same color as the background. Then at the top I can either put in text and of course change the design of what we see at the top. Or I can upload an image. I can convert that top banner to an image. I would grab an image off of my desktop, upload it. We use a tool called TinyPic, which is a free image host in order to store the tool or store the image and um, insert it into this layout. I have a few more options if I want to turn this into a true newsletter. Maybe I don't just want to have simple text paragraphs, but I want to put a title box with each entry. And I'm going to have three of those. So now my newsletter is starting to look like this. Of course, I want my title boxes to match the same color scheme. So there we go. Look a little better? That's how you can design a very simple template. At the bottom, we want to put in, make sure to put in our company name and a mailing address. This is required by the what's called the Can Spam Act of 2003. This is a legal requirement for any mass distributed emails. So make sure to put in an accurate mailing address down here. Then hit save and continue. Now it's taken what we created in our simple designer and it turns it into HTML for us to use. We can manipulate this here, make any small tweaks that we might like to make, um, changing the template if we want to, and then saving it with a new name. Now that template is available for us to use on other emails. We get done, we click Save Email, and it'll appear on our dashboard. Finally, the last thing we can do with our emails is beyond just saving the templates of one design, we can create what's called a triggered campaign. And a triggered campaign is, for example, if you've tried a free trial of Address 2, you received a getting started on Address 2 email on day zero, immediately after signing up. One day later, you received a follow-up email. Ten days later, you received an email that said, have you made use of Address 2? These may look familiar to you. You can trigger emails in series using the campaign manager. I pre-wrote each of these emails as a follow-up to all of our customers so that they would receive them according to the schedule. I then created a trigger tied to that simply by clicking the button at the bottom that says create trigger for this email campaign. And once I did that, I could include it with my web forms, which are found under the plugins and extras. Last thing to show you about emails is how we can use them for reporting. Here I'm viewing a report of emails that I've already sent in the past. Uh, about a month ago I sent out an email that says how to LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter connect to your CRM. If I click the stats icon to the right, it's going to bring up a report of what went on with this email. On this report I can see total it went to 311 people. Five of those must have bounced because it was only delivered to 306. 
one of the things that confuses people is the difference between a unique view and a total view. You can see that it, the email was viewed in total 128 times, but those were only by 74 unique viewers. What that means is 74 actual people viewed the email. It just so happens that some of those 74 people viewed it more than once, which is how we get to the total of 128. I can see that represented, by the way, when I look at my viewers and I find repeats of the same viewer. Uh, for example, T. Parker at Bloom Group viewed it twice. Lastly, I can see that 14 people of the 306 that got it clicked on a link. Here is the body of that email, just so I can see what it was that was sent. Now, this is kind of nice and handy just to see as an overview or stats, but how does this really affect my marketing? How can I use this to tie into my sales and marketing? Because we can take this list of viewers or the list of clickers and we can turn that into a targeted lead list. Let's say that of this email, 14 people decided to click on a link and I'm going to consider that those 14 people now are hot prospects. I want to make a specific effort to get in touch with just those 14 people. Well, it's not just academic data that we know those 14 people clicked the link. We can come down and we can click create query under the link click through. When I do that, it turns those 14 contacts into a query, excuse me, 13 contacts, 14 total clicks, 13 contacts into a query that I can then use. This could be a call list. I can move down the list and start making phone calls. I could use it for a follow-up email. I can use this list, send email, follow up with them. Or one of the things I like to do is to follow up on an email with a postcard. Maybe I don't want to send a postcard to all 300 people, but I will spend the money on a postcard to send to just the 13 who I know are highly interested in the topic we're talking about. This is our postcard designer. The postcard tool is a new feature of Address 2, a recently new feature anyways, where we can design the postcard online. One of two options, we can type a marquee text if we don't have a, a, a specifically designed image to use, or we can upload an image. Uploading an image requires that you have an image or a photo editor tool that will allow you to um, size the image specifically to what we require. The same thing is true on the back. We can type a message for the back of the postcard, or we can upload an image to fill this uh, left half of the back of the postcard. Once again, there's some specific size requirements for the images. So for most people, if you don't have graphic design skills or a graphic designer on staff, the typing a marquee text and typing a message is the simplest way to go. Of course, I can save that template, use a, uh, a pre-designed template, and then move on. You'll notice that I do have to have a sender profile for this message. The sender profile has to have that postal address, as I showed you earlier. When I click Compose and Send, I'm presented with a design option. Here again, I can change my marquee text. So where it says text here, if I change that to Hello Email Clicker, I'm sending this to the 14 people who had clicked on my email. By the way, I don't recommend that you send anything like this. But just for sake of demonstration, hello email clicker, I'm going to write a message to you. Now I'm designing the backside. I want to insert a mail merge field. It's going to give me this little snippet. I need to copy it and paste it where I want it in the body of the email, or the body of the postcard, rather. First name. I noticed that you clicked my email link. Please call me. Whatever you want to say. Then you can say, regards. Nick Carter. When I cl click on um, send postcard, or if I schedule it for later, this postcard is going to be added to the queue, ready to send. We print it and mail it right from our facilities in Indianapolis. You never have to lick any stamps. You never have to make a trip to the postal uh, or to the post office box. You never have to make a trip to the printer. You can send as few as one postcard at a time, and it's a very handy way to do follow ups. That is an overview of the campaign manager and all the ways that you can use it. If you have any other questions, let us know.